last year in this question paper there was a mistake in question 5.1 but if you go online now and you download this paper they fixed the mistake all right yes i will post this video on youtube definitely so you don't have to worry about last year's mistake they have fixed it in the paper that is now on <laughs> on line online on their website um you'll do better in term five yes lisa why not <laughs> okay let's get going with this guys so trig is the biggest section in the paper in the yeah in paper two now the reason for that is because trig actually consists of three topics right it's the normal trig which is usually question five in the paper so it's these trig questions where you have to work with reduction formula you have to prove identities solve equations and so on i know someone's playing music outside it's every time i go live there's either a dog barking or people shouting outside or music being played it's as if they know that i'm live all right um and working with identities working with um, 30, 60, 45 degree triangles and so on. That's the one section of trig. The second section is trig graphs. And then the third section is 3D trig, where you're working with sign rule, cos rule and area rule. Now those two sections are usually quite, um, like the mark allocation is very small for that. So in last year's exam, for example, you can see here question five was 30 marks. And the whole trig section is meant to count 50. So 30 of the 50 marks was on this kind of, I don't want to say straightforward trig stuff, but just, you know, trig working with reduction formula and reference angles and so on. So grade 11, Kathy, I'm going to start doing grade 11 lives probably sometime next week. But I'll post about it on here and on my Instagram. I'll also announce once I know what my schedule is going to look like next week. All right, guys, let's take a look. 5.1. This is a very typical type of question where they are giving you an equation with a trig ratio. And they're saying, given this trig ratio, or this equation, where x is between 90 and 270, they always give you an interval on your Cartesian plane. You now then, without using a calculator, have to determine the values of these. Now, guys, as soon as you see the words without using a calculator, you are probably going to have to draw a diagram. All right, you are going to have to draw a triangle, a right angle triangle, so that you can calculate sine, cos, and tan. All right, so um, someone here is saying, please do grade 11 math paper two. This question can be in a grade 11 math paper two, this exact qu question and the next one. And yeah, so a whole bunch of these questions are actually on grade 11 content. All right, now guys, for this, what we need to do is we need to first isolate the third, not the third, sorry. <laughs> you can see I'm in paper one. Um, yeah, my paper one mind is still there. You need to isolate the trig ratio. Sorry, not the third, the trig ratio. So first you're going to say, okay, if I have root 13 sine x, if I take that three over to the other side, it's going to become negative three, right? And then I'm going to have to just get sine x on its own. I need to divide that negative three by root 13. Now, why this is useful is because remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So that is sine. Sine is always opposite over hypotenuse. So if we have an expression for sine and it's a fraction, then this will allow us to draw a right angle triangle and we already have two of the three sides. Then we can use Pythagoras to get the third side. So someone is asking here, are we going to do trig functions? Would you guys like me to do some trig functions? Because then we can just do a few of these questions and then we can move on to the trig functions question. These questions count more marks. But the trig functions, yeah, trig functions is usually like 10 to 12 marks only. But okay, I'll move on to the trig functions question just now. Um, okay, now here, sine is negative. Now guys, in which I did Euclidean already two weeks ago, it's on my YouTube. So sine is negative in quadrants three and four, right? So if we have sine x equal negative 3 over root 13, then our triangle is either going to have to be in the third or the fourth quadrant. Now this bit of information is going to help us figure out, is it in the third or the fourth quadrant? Now if it's between 90 and 270, remember 90 degrees is over here, 
270 is over there. That means that between 90 and 270, it's going to have to be this quadrant there. It's going to have to be quadrant 3. All right, so quadrant three is where our triangle is going to be. So now you just draw your triangle. You don't have to draw the other quadrants really. So you'll see I usually just do a kind of picture like that. So I have some space on my third quadrant here. Then I draw my triangle. I connect it to the x-axis. You always have to connect it to the x-axis, guys. That's very important. And the angle that we're working with here angle that they gave us is x right that's the y axis that is the x axis y3 y quadrant 3 because quadrant 3 is the only quadrant where sine is negative and where the angle is between 90 and 270 yes you do get marks for drawing okay can i also do a general solution yes i will i'll do the general solution from this question from this question 5 all right let's say oh yes you get a mark for drawing this this picture for putting it in the correct quadrant at least all right so now we need to we figured out which quadrant it's in so now we need to say sine is opposite over hypotenuse so now the opposite side guys is going to have to be negative three and the hypotenuse is root 13 guys the hypotenuse is always positive the hypotenuse can't be negative all right so the hypotenuse is always positive so for us to get a negative fraction the opposite side has to be negative because this is supposed to be negative 3 over root 13 so the opposite side has to be negative 3 so that is there okay now guys it's also important to note that since this is in the third quadrant do we see that all of these y values here are negative y values right they are below zero so that means that we have to put a negative sign in front of that number this is not actually really the the side length because the length of the side is three absolutely it's positive right what they're actually referring to here when they say negative three that's actually if you had a point here let's say the point p then the x value of this point would be negative three all right so we have to put that as negative now we don't know what the oh sorry it's actually the y value my apologies the x value is something that we must still calculate and the y value is negative three all right so now we need to calculate the x side here okay this x value here now we need to use pythagoras for that now since we have the hypotenuse we're finding another side that means that we're going to say the hypotenuse squared minus the other side squared always all right so i'm just going to call this a let's call that a i'm just assigning a, a variable to it um, so that i can calculate it so i'm going to say a squared the side squared is the hypotenuse squared minus the other side squared now you can write negative 3 squared, but you can also actually just write 3 squared. It's going to give you the same answer, right? Negative 3 squared and 3 squared, both of those answers are 9. And the reason, very important, you actually lose a mark, guys, if you don't write Pythagoras somewhere. So you have to do that. So we're going to get 13 minus 9, so that is 4. Right, you would just work that out. So A is then going to be, now guys, I know we're finding the length of a side, but we're not actually finding the length of a side. We're actually finding the length based on whether these are positive or negative X values, right? Now, if we're going to this, um, Tabang, no. So this triangle we're going to use for all three of these questions. It's not necessarily ne needed for the first one. I just always start when I see without using a calculator, then I draw my diagram. Okay, but normally the question where you actually need this triangle is the one that counts the most. So we're probably only going to need it in the second question. Okay. Um, so now, yeah, guys, remember when you have an a squared equal to 4, right? If we weren't working with a triangle, you would always say, if I'm taking a square over, it becomes a square root, but it has to be a positive or negative square root. Yes, Bianca, you get marks for the diagram, because 2 squared is 4, but also negative 2 squared will also be 4. That's why we need to get 2 marks. Now here, 
because our x values here are all negative, guys, if you had to find the x value of this point, it would be a negative number, right? It would be on the negative side here. So this is actually negative 2. That's very important. That is one of the most common mistakes with these types of questions is that people forget to put the correct sign. People just want to put positive values because they just think it's a triangle. I'm finding the length. So the length is always positive. But actually, you need to see, am I on the positive side of the x-axis or the negative side? Okay. Um, Chanel, I will try and post this as soon as I can. It just depends on YouTube, basically, how long it takes to upload. All right, so now that was kind of the introduction, right? I haven't actually answered my questions yet. The first question that they're asking is sine of 360 plus x. Now, guys, 360 degrees plus x, which quadrant is that in? If we're working in quadrants, hey, do you guys know your cast diagram? A, S, T, C. You know in which quadrant? all the signs are positive, right? The different trig ratios. So if we add 360 degrees, so we're starting here, remember? Let me fill in the degree values. This is zero, this is 90, this is 180, 270, and then that is 360 as well. Sorry, that's off the screen. So if we're going from zero, we're going all the way to 360, and then we still have to add another acute angle. Remember, with these types of questions, the x value that we, or if they've given us x or theta or whatever to represent an angle, that's always an acute angle, an angle in the first quadrant. So 360, I see you guys are saying the correct value, 360 plus x, that's in quadrant one. So guys, this is just basically sine x again. So we can change sine 360 plus x. Sorry, I don't want to put that in blue. Sine 360 plus x is actually just sine x. And the reason why this is only two marks is because we know what sine x is. Hey, we have it there. We don't actually need to use the picture for this. So negative 3 over root 13. So in order to get this value, you would have to do this step of making sine x the subject so that you can then use that. Okay, so I think in terms of marks here, they would have given one mark. Actually, I can check the memo quickly. Let me take a look here. I didn't mark this question last year, so I'm not super clued up on it. Um, oh, it, yeah, it was just one mark. Oh, wow, they didn't actually... Hang on. They don't have the final answer here. So on the memo, they've just said sine x, but that's wrong. It is sine x, but then you still have to do that. Um, yeah, it looks like they haven't properly fixed this memo. Um, yeah, okay, that's alarming. Anyway, all right, so that is 5.1.1. 5.1.2. So guys, if you're looking at this memo online, just check... Um, yeah, the, they've only gone up until sine x. They don't actually have the answer on the memo. All right, next question is now asking us to find tan x. Now, here is where we need to use our, our triangle, right? Our diagram. Tan is opposite over adjacent. So negative 3 over negative 2. Now, you can write negative 3 over negative 2 and then 3 over 2. But it also would have been fine if you just went straight to 3 over 2. So if you could see that the negatives are cancelling out straight away, that's also fine. Now, in this question, because you need the triangle for this question, the answer will be one mark. But you are going to get a mark for drawing your triangle, having those values there, drawing it in the correct quadrant. And then also you get a mark for this whole calculation, right? So basically for using Pythagoras, that is the third mark there for that one. Okay, 5.1.3, last question here, cos 180 plus x. All right, now here we need to, here we need to determine which quadrant this is in. So 180, right, if we can look at this diagram here, 180 is over there, right, that's 180 degrees. And then we're adding an acute angle to it, so this is in quadrant 3. Now, guys, what is cos in the third quadrant? Is it positive or negative? It's negative, right? So this is going to change to negative cos x. 
So you drop the 180 plus and instead of the 180 plus you use the sine in that quadrant. Okay, now again we need to use our triangle to get negative cos x. Okay, so negative first and now we're going to put the cos x value in here. Now cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So negative 2 over root 13. Now what happens when we have a negative multiplied by another negative? That becomes a positive. So the answer there is 2 over root 13. And that's the final answer for that one. Now this one again was only two marks and on the memo again they have only gone as far as this negative cos x which is very strange to me. I'm not sure why that is. You would get a mark for negative cos x and then a mark for your answer. All right so just be aware on the memo they haven't put the full answer down for some reason. Okay next question 5.2, I do want us to do this one quickly because there is always one of these questions. It also says without using a calculator and it always counts quite a lot of marks. It was only five marks last year, but guys, I personally have marked questions like these that are like six, seven marks. Okay, so these types of questions can really earn you a lot of marks and you are just kind of doing the same method over and over again. So when they're saying determine the value of the following expression without using a calculator, sometimes they also just say simplify the following expression without using a calculator and then you would do the same thing. So now here, what we need to notice is that we have a 90 plus. Now I know it's easy to forget, but guys, with a 90 plus or a 90 minus, yes, Daniel, that this is a co-ratio. So that means that you must check which quadrant it's in and then you must change it from cos to sine when you take the correct sign in that quadrant. All right, so 90 plus theta, which quadrant is that? Again, I'm just going to draw my little cast diagram, A, S, T, C, 90 plus theta. This is in the second quadrant, right? Now, what is cos in the second quadrant? Sine is positive, but cos is negative. So this is going to become negative sine theta. Guys, that is a big misconception. A lot of people say, ma'am, but sine is positive in the second quadrant. So why does it become negative sine? Now, we need to go with what the ratio was originally, right? This is actually a cos ratio in the second quadrant. So if we had like cos of 150, for example, that would be negative. That actual value of that would be negative. So we always take the sign of the original ratio, not the ratio that you are changing it into. Okay, so because cos is negative in the second quadrant, we change it to negative sign. Okay, that is very important. That's a mistake that a lot of people make. All right, let's look at the next one. At the bottom here, we have theta minus 180. So now we're starting with the acute angle, right? Theta is going to be in the first quadrant. Now they're saying minus 180. So now we have to go 180 degrees backwards, right? So theta is here, minus 180. So this actually ends up in the third quadrant. This is in quadrant three. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> I appreciate that comment. All right, so this is in the third quadrant. What is sine in the third quadrant? It is negative. So negative sine theta. Guys, I'm now not changing this sign to a cos because 180 degrees, that's not a co-ratio angle. Okay, we only change when it's 90 degrees. Also 270, but 270 is not actually in the syllabus anymore. All right, so don't worry about that. When you see 90, you have to change cos to sine or sine to cos. When it's 180 or 360, you just leave it as it is. Okay, so next one here, now we have a plus... So these are actually two separate terms, three and then sine negative theta. Okay, I'll put the three there. We need to figure out what sine negative theta is going to turn into. Now guys, negative theta is a negative acute angle, right? So like negative 20 or something. So this negative theta is actually in the fourth quadrant. Quadrant four. What is sine in the fourth quadrant, positive or negative? Only cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. So sine is negative. So this becomes negative sine theta. Now, guys, you could have written this differently. You could have gone straight to negative sine theta minus three sine theta. 
Okay, so I'm just going to write it like that. I have to do it in the next step anyway. But it's fine if what I'm writing now was your first actual like calculation step. Minus 3 sine theta like that. To see if you guys are all on board with that. Please repeat 180 part, okay? So sine of theta, theta is in the first quadrant, it's an acute angle, minus 180. So you're going 180 degrees backwards. So that gives you an angle that is in the third quadrant. So then you say, what is sine in the third quadrant? Only tan is positive, so sine is negative. So you change it to negative sine theta. So you leave out the whole minus 180 thing, and instead you use the sine in that quadrant. All right, now guys, here at the bottom, we have like terms, right? Please don't fall into the trap of doing this. Lovely, negative sine theta, negative sine theta. You're not allowed to do that, guys. You can't cancel out if you have more than one term. I have two terms in the denominator of this fraction, so I'm not allowed to cancel out, okay? I have to simplify. I have to have one term over one term, then I can cancel out. So at the top of this fraction, I have negative sine theta. And at the bottom, negative sine theta minus 3 sine theta, that's negative 4 sine theta. Now I have one term and one term. So now I can cancel out the negatives and I can cancel out the signs. And I'm left with a 4 in the denominator. Nothing at the top, right? But actually, that means that there's a 1 at the top. So my answer there is 1 over 4. Okay, I just quickly want to see what they awarded marks for here. So it was one mark for the negative sine theta at the top. Then there was one mark for the negative sine theta at the bottom. One mark for the negative sine theta there, whether you wrote it like I did in a bracket or if you changed the 3 to a negative straight away. Then a mark for adding these two or subtracting them, I suppose, for doing your, um, oh, sorry, your like terms, so for getting negative four, and then a mark for your final answer. It didn't change to cos to tan, like cos changed to negative sign. Oh, I think I missed a comment somewhere. Why did change to tan like cos change to negative sine? So the reason why cos changed to sine here is because it's a 90 degree angle. So whenever we're working with a 90 plus theta or 90 minus theta, we have to change cos to sine. But if it's a 180, you don't do that. It stays sine. Um, so now... So, Wagen at the two, oh, sorry, I just knocked this thing. <laughs> My apologies. Um, at the second step, why didn't you just cancel negative sine theta out? So, that's what I said earlier. We have two terms in the denominator, and you are not allowed to just cancel out if you have multiple terms, either at the top or at the bottom or in both. Because what this is actually saying is you need to divide this numerator by the whole denominator. And if I'm just cancelling this out, I'm only dividing by negative sine theta. I'm not dividing by that as well. So we have to first simplify it so that I have one term over one term and then I can cancel out. Okay. All right, guys, so that's a five mark question. I'm going, going to do the next one now. Someone was asking for a general solution question. I'm going to do this one quickly. Would the same happen if it was sine and change to someone? So if you have sine of 90 plus theta, then that has to change to cos theta. And then if you have cos of 90 plus theta or 90 minus, then you have to change this to negative sine theta. So the reason why this one is positive because this is the second quadrant and sine is actually positive in the second quadrant. So this stays positive. This one, cos in the second quadrant is negative, so that's why we change it to a negative. Okay, general solutions. 
I would change to cos, yes. So it's tan 90. There's no 90 degree rule for tan that you do, do in core. It's just sine and cos. Well, yeah, this is not grade 9 work. <laughs> you only actually start with trig in grade 10. So I'm not su surprised that you are... <laughs> That you are confused. How did I get 1 over 4? Okay, just quickly there. I had negative sine theta over negative 4 sine theta. So the negatives cancelled out. The sine thetas cancelled out. I was left with nothing at the top. But that means that there's a 1 left. And I'm left with a 4 at the bottom. No, so cot, cosec and sec in the grade 12 syllabus. No, you only do them in grade 10. And then they're not in the syllabus after that. All right, for 5.3, guys, this co-ratio, or sorry, this general solution question actually was not really um, that difficult because they had already factorized it for you. Guys, remember if you're solving a, an equation, right, and you have like x plus 1, x minus 2 equals 0. This is another example. The way that you do that is you would say, okay, the first bracket must be equal to zero or the second bracket must be equal to zero and then x is negative one or x is positive two, right? That's what you would do. I would do the same thing here. So again, we have two brackets being multiplied together equal to zero. So again, I'm going to take each of those two brackets separately and I'm going to make them equal to zero and solve. So I'm going to say cos x... And you could do this, what I'm doing now, in less steps if you're able to. But I just want to show you exactly what I'm doing. I don't want anyone to miss out on a step here. So I'm making my first bracket equal to zero or my second bracket equal to zero. Right? So now what I need to do, this one is a little bit tricky actually. I'm going to move that cos x over to the other side. I'll show you guys now a trick, something that we can do here. over there right so 2 sine x equals negative cos x on this side it's a bit easier let me maybe actually start with this side because here we just have one ratio to worry about we just have a sine so i'm going to make sine the subject here so sine 2x equal to 1 over 3 and then from there we can get our we can get our equation now with the trig equation um I can't re-explain the previous question now, but I'm going to post this whole video on my YouTube, okay? So you are able to go watch it there at your own pace. Pause, rewind, re-watch it if you need to. All right, I'll post it tonight. Okay, guys, are we okay with this step up until here? So because it's the product of two brackets equal to zero, we make both of those brackets equal to zero separately and then solve. I'm going to talk about this one in a little while, right? This one is easier. So let's start with the one on the right first. Where did we get 1 over 3? Why didn't we minus? So when you move a negative 1 over to the other side, the opposite of subtracting 1 is adding 1, right? So there, 0 plus 1 is 1. And now I'm dividing by 3 so that I can get sine 2x on its own. Now from here, what we need to do, guys, with a trig equation, you always want a trig ratio, either sine, cos, or tan, an angle. In this case, our angle is 2x and a number, right? Now, I have this in the correct, um, what's the word? I have this in the correct form. So what I now do, and now different teachers might teach this slightly differently. So if you don't write yours out like mine, don't stress, it's fine. I am now going to write the reference angle, and I say RA, some people say ref angle. Please just write whatever you have been taught to write. Now, because this is a sign equation, I'm gonna say shift sign which we write like this, of 1 over 3. That is going to give us the reference angle, right? So on the calculator, let me just actually, sorry, my calculator is in the wrong mode. Let me just put it back into degrees. So we're going to do shift sign of 1 over 3, and that is the reference angle, 19,47 degrees. All right, so the reference angle is 19,47 degrees. Now, the reference angle, guys, is an angle that we are now going to use to get our general solutions. Now, we need to look back at this equation. This equation that we have here is very important because this equation is telling us that sine of the angle that we're going to get must be positive. 
Now, in which quadrants will sign be positive? In quadrants 1 and 2. You need to know that. I haven't done anything with the 2x yet. I'm bringing it back now. All right, so sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So now I'm going to write a quadrant 1 general solution. You don't have to label it like this. I just always do. I'm going to write a quadrant 1 general solution, and now the 2x is coming back, right? Now my angle 2x is equal to an angle in the first quadrant and an angle in the second quadrant. And guys, we use the reference angle to get the first quadrant and second quadrant actual values. Now, in the first quadrant, we always use the reference angle because do we agree that 19,47 degrees, that is an angle in the first quadrant. Remember, first quadrant is between 0 and 90, right? Second quadrant is between 90 and 180. Okay, so in my first quadrant, I'm just going to use the reference angle exactly as it is, 19,47 degrees. But now, because it's a sine equation, remember the period of a sine graph is, is 360 degrees. That means that we're going to have this value at 19,47, but then again 360 degrees after that, and every 360 degrees after that. So I know that a lot of teachers write it like this, k times 360, and then they'll say k is an element of z, but you don't have to use k times three k times three sixty. I actually usually write three sixty n, and then I say n is an element of z. That's just how I was taught when I was in high school, and either way is fine. You use whichever letter your teacher used or taught you to use, whatever you feel um, comfortable with, and then you will get the mark then. Now, guys, we have to make x the subject. We have two x, so I actually need to divide everything by two here. So on the calculator, I'm just dividing that angle by 2. I'm getting 9,74 degrees plus k times 180 or 180k. Now, it's important, guys, that you only have to write this once. The first time that you write that variable down, you just state what it is. All right, it has to be an integer. So k or n or whatever is an element of z. All right, so 9,74 plus k times 180, or 180n if you write it like I do. That is your first quadrant solution. We still have to do a second quadrant solution. So Q2. What, what are you guys talking about with the R? <laughs> I'm just reading the comments quickly. Um, so the study guide, they are just, um, it's not, it's not printed. It's just an ebook, an equation like this. Yeah, they are nice. Okay. All right. I think those are the questions that you guys have been asking on this. I feel like you guys are, oh, you're talking about today's paper. Okay. All right. So quadrant two guys to get an angle in the second quadrant, that will satisfy this equation. We have to make that same angle 2x equal to, now to get an angle in the second quadrant, remember it's between 90 and 180, right? So we're always going to have to say 180 minus the reference angle. In the first quadrant, it's always the reference angle. Second quadrant is always 180 minus the reference angle. So I'm going to say 180 minus 19,47 plus again k times 360 and now I must just solve for x. So first I'm going to work that out. I'm going to say 180 minus 19,47 that is 160,53 plus 360, oh sorry, plus k times 360 and now we need to divide everything by 2. So that 160,53 must be divided by 2, and I'm rounding to two decimals. So I'm getting 80,27 plus k times 180 degrees. There we go. And then those are the answers for that one. This is quite a lot of work, guys. This is just one of the two equations. Okay. 
Now the other equation, which I've been putting off because it's a little bit more complicated. So there are two ways in which you could approach this equation, right? You can, obviously we're going to have to move, we're going to have to move that two over to the other side. We can't have a number here in front of the sine x, all right? So I'm going to have to move that two over. But guys, what I'm also going to do, and this is a trick that I just want to show you. If you have an equation like this, right? And you have a sine x on the one side, and you have a cos x on the other side, you can actually turn this into, oh, it's off camera, there we go. You can actually turn this into a tan equation. Yes, exactly, someone there is saying divide both sides by cos, 100%. All right, so I'm just going to move that, to, yeah, well, let's do it like that. Let's actually write it like that. Let's divide both sides by cos. I don't know why that little red line is there, sorry about that. So I'm dividing both sides by cos x because sine over cos is tan, right? So this actually turns into 2 tan x equal to negative 1. Right, so that's a little trick for you guys. If you have sine x equals cos x, you can turn it into a tan equation by dividing both sides by cos. Now, this is actually going to be very easy to solve. I just need to move that 2 over to the other side. And guys, tan equations are nice because for a tan equation, you only have to do one general solution. You don't have to do both. All right, so that's actually less work for us. I don't know why this iPad is telling me that this is a spelling mistake. Um, that's why it's underlining it. <laughs> anyway, now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say reference angle equals. Now, guys, very important for your reference angle, you always have to use the positive value to calculate it. Because if you type in shift tan of negative a half, you are not going to get a reference angle. The definition of a reference angle is that it's a first quadrant angle right? It's an angle between 0 and 90. So if I type in shift tan negative a half, I get this, negative 26,56, right? Which is actually in the fourth quadrant. So I need to do shift tan positive a half, and then we are going to get our reference angle of 26,56, oh, it's actually 57, my apologies, comma 57 degrees, because it's comma 565, the mode has to be in a uh, just degree mode. Mine was in radians because I was working with radians earlier. You shouldn't have that problem um, unless you do AP maths or further studies maths. Okay, so now that is the reference angle. Now we're going to use the same method that I used over here, guys. In which quadrants will tan be negative? In second, quadrant two and four, right? So let's get our quadrant two general solution. Now my angle here is also easy, it's just x. x is equal to, in quadrant 2, we always do 180 minus the reference angle. But now tan is different, guys. Remember that the, um, the period of a tan graph is 180. Sorry, I'm used to writing 180n. Let me just do k180. There we go. So now I'm going to work this out, 180 minus, and I'm getting 153,43 degrees plus K times 180. Now guys, that's actually it. I'm not going to do the fourth quadrant solution because that fourth quadrant solution is already embedded in this general solution that I have here because this one is saying 153,43, which is in quadrant two, right? plus 180 times k. Now, if I do that, if I add 180 degrees once, I'm going to get the fourth quadrant solution anyway. So for tan, you always only have to do one. Camila, no, you only have to write k element of z once, right? If you don't write it at all, you get marked down, but if you, you only have to write it once, okay? You don't have to write it any, every single time. All right. Um, I want to jump across to the trig graph quickly because we are running out of time. We have about 18 minutes. So, Paul, yes, you can do both for tan in the test. Um, you won't lose marks. It's just a waste of time. Okay, but I mean, it's also not that much time that you're wasting. Um, yes, you won't. They're not going to take off marks if you're doing something extra. Okay, so you can do the fourth quadrant one if you are worried about that. Um, they are very strict on marking in some things, yes. In some 
other things not and unfortunately I don't know ahead of time what they are going to um what they're going to decide to be strict on they are strict on reasons and they are strict on showing important steps guys I actually forgot to say something I'm going back to the previous question it's very important with this question here right now it's not really such a big deal with this question but sometimes you get a question where you see, okay, it's a negative at the top and then it's another negative, right? Sorry for that jumping. So say you have like a negative sign X and then the, the other one that you need to change is like a negative cos X, right? Now, some of you that are very smart might realize I'm getting negative sin X and negative cos X. So both are negative, so I'm canceling out the, the minuses in my head, right? You might want to do that in your head. So you might want to just write sin X cos X. Now, guys, that's actually a big mistake. It's not wrong what you're doing, but the markers are instructed specifically to only give this mark if it's a negative sin X and to only give the next mark if it's a negative cos X. Because if you are just writing this, even though this is correct for the next step, the marker is going to interpret this as you think that this is meant to be positive sin x. So they're going to say that's wrong. And you are interpreting this as if it's supposed to be neg positive cos x and it's meant to be negative. So that's wrong. You get the marks after that, right? If you get to the, because you will get to the correct answer and we do give marks for that. But you have to show every single sign of each of those reductions that you are using. Okay, I just thought that I should tell you guys that. That's very important. This is just an example that I made up. Okay, it didn't come from anything. I just wanted to show you. So please don't cancel out negatives in your mind. Write all of the negatives down and then cancel them out. Okay, someone was asking, how did I get four? Because negative sine theta minus three sine theta is negative four sine theta. So that's where the four is coming from. Uh, sine 2x, yes. Well, 2 sine x cos x is sine 2x. Okay, let's look at the trig graph question because you guys were asking me about this. I'm going to see if I can maybe go live on Sunday or something for uh, just one last time before you do your exam, but I'll keep you guys posted. But I am planning on filming a whole bunch of explanation videos for paper 2 stuff this weekend and posting them. So please just keep an eye on my TikTok and then also on my YouTube. I will also post on there. Okay, now guys, in this picture, in the diagram below, the graphs of f of x, which is tan x, and g of x, which is 2 sine 2x, are drawn for the interval negative 180 to 180. Then they're telling us that a, which is the point 60 degrees, and k, right, it's also been indicated there, and B are two points of intersection of F and G. Now, guys, what I want you to notice before we even read further, right? That A, which is 60 degrees and K, do we see that B is that same point just one period back, right? If we're looking at this, this is the graph, the sine graph, there we go. And then this is the tan graph. And where the tan graph is going up, that is exactly one period before that point. So between these two points, there is exactly a 180 degree difference. And they should have the same y value. So this point B is going to be what 60 minus 180? It's negative 120, right? And then k as well, whatever k is. So that's something that you need to see straight away. That is the nice thing about trig graphs is they work with symmetry. The exact same shape keeps repeating itself every period, right? And because we're looking at this tan graph and then the same point or the same part of the tan graph again, that means because the period of tan is 180, there's a 180 degree difference between those two points. Okay, that is going to be important later on. You can see in 6.2, they're asking us about those values. All right, now... Just quickly, what are they saying for 6.1? Write down the period of G. Guys, that is an easy question. You have to know. What is G? G is the graph of 2 sine 2x. Now, guys, this 2 over here, that 2, the, the 2 that is in front of x, this is November 2022, the 2 that is in front of x, this changes the period. This causes the period to be equal to the normal period of a sine graph, divided by 2. 
whatever the number is in front of the x, the coefficient of x, you need to divide the original period by that to get the new period. So the period of g is actually going to be 180 degrees as well. All right, so for this, the period of G is 180 degrees. There you have your one mark. That is a knowledge question, guys. That is just a question. If you know your work, if you know how to find the period of a graph, you can get that mark. Okay, you have to also do that. Oh, thank you so much for that gift. All right, now, next up, now we need to calculate the value of K. Now, guys, I'm going to work with what they gave us, right? They gave us point A is 60 and k. Now guys, point A is actually a point that lies on both of our graphs, right? It's a point of intersection of the two graphs. So what we can do, since we know the x value of this point, it's 60 degrees, we can get the y value, which is k, by either subbing it into that equation or by subbing it into that equation, right? You can, you can decide which equation you want to work with. The tan equation is actually the easiest one because it's just going to be tan 60. All right. So here I'm going to write that K is equal to tan of 60 degrees. So you just type that into the calculator. They didn't say without the use of a calculator, so you don't have to draw your special triangle. So that is just going to be root 3. Again, guys, that is a one mark question because you are meant to just know that if they've given you the x value of a point, they are asking for the y value. You need to sub that x value into the equation of the graph. All right. Now, guys, like I said already, the coordinates of B, we have them already. The coordinates of B are going to be <laughs> negative 120 because I hope that you guys all understood when I was saying that you are, you have point A and B is that same point just one period earlier, right? One period back. So from 60 degrees, we subtract that period. We subtract 180 to get to negative 120. And then the K value is the value that we worked out then. So root 3. Okay, there we go. That's another one mark. Again, because you are meant to be able to recognize that there's just one period difference between those two points. Okay. Next up. Now, guys, this I actually was, was, yeah, it was interesting last year that they asked so many questions about like changing the equations. Okay. Um, write down the range of two times GX. Now, there were two ways in which you could have done this. Um, the value of k, I just subbed x equals 60 into the equation of tan x, f of x, because this point lies on f of x. So if you sub in the x value, it will give you the y value, and k is the y value of this point. All right. Um, why did we subtract the period 180? Because these two points, if you look at what's happening, it's on the sine graph, it's where the sine graph is going up. And then down here, we have that same shape on the tan graph. It's where the tan graph is going up. Here we have the same shape. So it's the same point, um, meaning that the difference between those two points has to be 180, which is the period of the two graphs. So that's why we are subtracting 180. If the period was 360, then we would subtract 360. All right, there we go. Again, like I said, this was one mark here. Guys, are you with me? Yes, if you use GX, the value was going to be the same. Absolutely. Um, I just used F of X because it's the quicker one to use. Okay, but if you do 2 sine 2 times 60, you'll get the same answer of root 3. Okay, guys, are we with? I'm seeing lots of questions here. I don't want to move on if everyone's confused. Let me know. And if you are confused, what is confusing you? No one's saying that they're confused. Okay, I'm going to assume that that means that you are okay at this point. <laughs> I want to get to the next two questions quickly. We're probably not going to get to 6.5, but 6.5 is a problem-solving question. So I'm definitely going to record a video on that one for you guys. I did this one with Mimetrix the other day, and it's quite 
quite hectic, but it's doable, but it will take a while. Okay, so I'm going to have to record 6.5 for you. Let's quickly look at 6.3 and 6.4. They're asking us in 6.3 to write down the range of 2GX. Now, guys, we need to remember that range is all the Y values. Okay, I'm seeing lots of comments of you guys saying that you're not confused. Thank you very much for interacting. It's good for me also to see your questions because then I can see what I need to pay attention to. All right, write down the range of two times GX. Now, what we can do here, I'm actually just going to erase all of my notes here because I think I have written down everything that we need and it's starting to look a little bit messy. All right, now guys, G of X, just remember, they didn't actually tell us what these Y values are here of these points, hey? But we can look at the equation. Do we all see that the amplitude of G is two? Right? Yes, I do put my lives on um, YouTube. I'll put this one up later. So the amplitude of this graph is 2. So that means that the range is going to be from negative 2 to positive 2. Right? Now, we can kind of see that on the picture, but they didn't tell us what the Y values here are. And they also don't have any labels like on the Y axis. So we actually need to look at the equation in order to see what the range of this graph is going to be right? So the range of G, the original G graph, is going to be from negative 2 to 2. Thank you, Natando. Thank you. That's very kind of you to say. So now they're asking for the range of 2 times GX. Now, guys, GX is 2 sine 2X. 2GX two is going to be 2 times 2 sine 2X, right? If we had to find the equation of that. That is what we have to do there. That is what 2 times GX is going to be. This is GX, right? I have to multiply it by 2. Now, what is this going to be? This is just going to be 4 sine 2X. Because 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, Zunaid, I will um, address that just now. I'll talk about the brackets. Are we understanding this part here? That GX is 2 sine 2X. That equation was given. So 2GX is going to be 4 sine 2X. Right? Now we need to find the range of this. Because this is what they're asking us, in the, us for in the question. They're asking, write down the range of 2GX. Now guys, if this was a graph, the amplitude here is 4. Meaning that, what does that mean? The amplitude is telling you that the highest point... And the lowest point, right? That's the difference between, I'll talk about that now. That is the difference between like your middle line, like your axis here and the highest point and your axis and the lowest point is your amplitude. So essentially we're taking this 2 sine 2x and we're stretching it by two units. We're making it go from negative 4 to positive 4 instead of negative 2 to positive 2. That's what it means when the amplitude is 4. So that means that the range here is y element of, now guys, I'm using square brackets here with the negative 4 and the 4 because there are actually points there at negative 4 and 4. If we're looking at this graph, right, there is a point there. That point is negative 45 and negative 2. This point here is positive 45 and positive 2 right? Those are the coordinates of that point. Now, if my amplitude is 4, that means I'm going to have a point at negative 45 and negative 4 and 45 and 4. So because I actually have points there, I have to use square brackets. If I didn't have points there, then I would use round brackets, okay? Square brackets means that those values are included. Round brackets means that the values are excluded, now, someone here is asking, Vuyiswa is asking, why is the 2 outside the bracket not multiplying to the 2x? Because this is not, 2x is an angle, right? You can't multiply just a regular number with an angle. So it's also like if you have 2 times 3xy, right? That's one term. This is also one term. So you can't multiply. You see what I'm saying? You can't multiply the 2 by the 3 and then by the x and then by the y. You would do that if you had this. Hey, why is this thing not going away? If you had 2 times 3 plus x plus y, then you would multiply the 2 by everything. Okay. 
How did we get the 2 outside the bracket from the question? The question is saying 2 times gx. That's where the 2 is coming from. Don't understand about the brackets. Please rephrase. Um, so it would be 6xy, yes, that, equa that example that I, multi that I erased. Guys, for range, they're asking, what is the lowest y value? What is the highest y value? Yes, Unaid. Great. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is good. So I'm using square brackets because there is a point at negative 4. Right? The graph is actually going from negative 4 to positive 4. So I have to use the square brackets there. Wow, 14 finger hearts. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Sure. Um, so Ashley van Yerden, this is actually grade 11 work. Um, you could be asked to do this in grade 11. This is grade 11 work that's tested in matric. A lot of the stuff that's tested in grade 12 is grade 11 work. You can get a question exactly like this in your end of grade 11 exam. Okay, guys, I quickly, let me see, what, where are we for time? Yeah, I actually don't have time for 6.4 now. I'm going to have to um, record a video for 6.4 and then for 6.5. Okay, I'm going to post this live on my YouTube later this evening. Guys, I also saw in the comments that many of you are asking for Euclidean. I did a live for Euclidean two weeks ago. So that live has been on my um on my YouTube for a while now. You're just going to have to scroll down a little bit. Um, everyone is obviously focused on the, what's it called, on the paper one topics. So the paper two, you can go look at that. So 3D trig. Um, yeah, guys, I just want to point out to you that I think you need to prioritize the topics that count more marks. Okay, so I'm worried that many of you are spending a lot of time on things like 3D trig and trig graphs. And I see that with my own class as well. Because they struggle with it, they want to spend a lot of time on it. But now, if you actually look at the mark allocations, those two topics count very little. So you need to actually make sure that you're spending a lot of time on these types of questions, right? Functions. Grade 11 functions, you mean. Um... Which two topics? So trig graphs, I'm talking about. Trig graphs is usually only like 10 marks in your exam. And then 3D trig is also only about 10 marks. So yes, yeah. So you really need to go look at the, the mark allocations per topic. So like, guys, I think a lot of people also underestimate analytical geometry. Do I have the whole paper here? Yes, this is the whole paper from last year. Guys, are you studying stats? You have to study stats, right? The stats section is 20 marks. The stats section is as much as trig graphs and 3D trig combined. And I think a lot of people spend so much time on trig graphs, which of course you should study it, but have you actually studied stats? Do you know how to do all of these calculations? Do you know how to comment on these answers? You have to spend some time on stats as well, okay? Do you know how to read values off of an OGIVE? Do you know how to answer these questions? Then analytical geometry is also a big section. No one's asked me for analy analytical. So I'm just reminding you that you have to be able to do these. And some of these questions can be quite tricky. But what is nice with these chapters, guys, or these set questions, is that they are always basic things that they're asking you. So 3.1.1, the gradient of a line, right? We all should know how to find the gradient of a line. There we have point A, there we have point B. You know that gradient is change in Y over change in X. But you have to practice that to make sure that you can get these two marks. Then how do you find an angle of inclination? You have to know that tan of that angle is equal to the gradient of the line, right? Another two marks. Coordinates of T, T is the midpoint of this line. Do you know your midpoint formula? Coordinates of S, S is now, I can't remember how we had to find S, but there was some, some method here. So you need to actually go over these things. Find the equation of CD. You've been doing equations of straight lines since grade 9. Okay, you have to look over that again and make sure you can get those marks. Size of an angle, area of the picture of POSC, which is this shape there. And guys, I actually did this exact question in great detail in my cheat sheet if 